In Clifton and Bristol, her dogs and do trial. She lived with her mother, we know very well. At Open Storytellers, um, we tell stories um, about people who are um, disabled. We tell the stories all over, all over the place. What I enjoy the most is working in a group, working in front of audiences, grabbing their attention and making them think. So today is very exciting because we have a visit from the people from Bristol University who are going to be working with Alice and Robin to research the story of Fanny Fust. I've always been interested in history. It's important to each and every one of us and it's the, well, the fabric of our being. Welcome, we've just been talking about you. Fantastic. So, can I introduce the fabulous team from Bristol University? I'm going to be working with particularly Alice from Open Storytellers who's going to be doing the the research side of this project. He's, he's really nice. Because you never know with research and you don't know what you're going to find until you find it. I'm hoping Andy will be able to help me to find out everything about Fanny, the history, where she went to school, where she lived, where that her parents and are buried, where she's buried, everything, everything the history of, of learning disabilities and the way that people were treated and perceived in society. It's sort of been hidden history. Fanny is being abducted. It represents people who are disabled in this day and age, who are so easy to be taken advantage of because, in essence, they are Fanny. Actually, today has been the first time that I've met the group and met Alice. Alice has already gone away and, and found stuff. She's found um, the, 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 the parish registers with Fanny Fuss birth records. It's the first bit of research that you did, wasn't it? So it's a bit of an exploration, and it's that process of the exploration is what this is about. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's amazing, it's it? just It's just amazing. It was it just, just magic. When bringing we saw, her when to we, life, it was, isn't it? When we found out all the, his, all the details and everything about Fanny first, we tell it to the group. They're then taking another step. They're going out and representing this through drama, through image, through text. Then we can work as a group um, to um, find out the how to best um, perform the story. That has a whole nother value to it and that's really exciting. For the audience in Bristol to be excited, to, in, to be enthralled, to, be, to enjoy the story, to make, to make them think. This way. I'm, I'm amazed I'm not in the ceiling <laughs> of how excited I am about it all. What do we want to do? Um, when are we going to do it? When do we have to get it done by? There will be a showcase in Bristol in October and what we're hoping is that Open Storytellers will be able to give a, a little performance then and we know it might just be a work in progress. Um, we thought we could do the ballad of Fanny Fast. I hoped I would find something like a ballad or a poem mm. um, but there doesn't seem to be much but I think that form could be yeah. really useful. We have a certain amount of information about Fanny and about the case itself, but there are quite a lot of gaps. I've mostly seen newspaper articles, so lots of articles saying the court case has been postponed. Working with people who know about storytelling is a good way of thinking about how as historians and as literary historians we might think about how to responsibly fill in those gaps. If we've got one workshop on the language yeah. and how people spoke, does it make sense to have another workshop on what it looked like mm. in the yes, 18th century. Yes, yes, what yeah, people yeah. wore, what yeah. the buildings were like, how people got around. Yes. This is actual picture of Fanny first from 1787. So Robin's already done illustrations um, based around this story. One I think of, of, of Fanny departing um, on a boat, another one that's based in kind of 18th century Bristol. This is Fanny and her mum walking down a very old Bristol high street. It went really well because we 
looked at some days that we might be able to like go off to Bristol and research all the old places that belong to Fanny first. John and Josie and maybe somebody and Andy and maybe somebody else are going to come and do two workshops with us about what to look for in things like buildings. And then the second workshop will be about the kind of stories that happened in the 18th century. So that's what we did. And it was it was really great. It was, and everybody's yeah. feeling so positive and excited. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I went to Bristol University, it gave me a snapshot as um, what it's what it's like to go to university. I've always wished I could have gone to university because my brother had gone to um, university in Brighton, mm. and um, it would have it would have been a, it would have been nice just to experience that. It's been really exciting doing the research with Fanny Fast. You need to um, look at the information and um, and write down the research that joins on to the information you've got already. Yeah, perfect. For it to make sense. Yeah. So what kind of school would it have been some? I'd have guessed a private tutor. If a rich family oh. should have had a tutor come into them. So what's our, our next thing? Oh, Fanny Fast Guide to Bristol. Should we do you want to talk about that? We've been trying to decide whether Robin would do the pictures of Fanny kind of doing activities in those places or whether it would be better to have the old buildings and then pictures of how they look today. He's been already sketching sort of pictures of Fanny. And we've got a bit of a dilemma about how to represent her. <laughs> but one of the things that we wanted was to enable people to start developing a sense of the style of the 18th century. So that's why Clem was working on ballads, Tim working on music. And so he's been studying Hogarth. These are really fantastic because what you can see is a real development of Robin's style yes. in, into clearly a sort of Hogarthian, but it's very clearly Robin as well, mm. and I'm, I'm really excited about yeah, it. Yeah, and I think so. Beautiful, these are amazing. Mm. We do believe there is a painting, a portrait of Fanny, but... Um, in fact, Andy Foyle turned up a reference to it in yes. a catalogue, so it's so frustrating. Yes. Um, yeah. Let me see. That's uh, the aunt. Yeah. That's the aunt of Fanny First. She's also called Fanny First. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this could be the family that that left the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so do, is our consensus then that if we can find out that she's a blood relation, that Robin could probably base a portrait? Yeah, There's really a good. piece of paper all on that my dad did with all the, the firsts and the Jenna and the, the... I think it's in the file. The oh, tree, because... It's in your file. Okay. Because we... Yeah, yeah. Right. It, would it, yeah. Been, it would have been yeah. good yeah. to have to look, have that on the okay. computer yeah. Yeah. to yeah. look... Let's do that as an action plan. Me and Kay and Jim and the other Ubi Storytelling group got a bit confused with Francis Payne and Francis Hell because we thought, oh, how does that go? Francis one is Francis Payne. Francis Payne. Francis Payne. She's the one who goes back to the hall. Then Francis. She had Lisbeth's story, Mum's story. And Fanny's story, and then we know there's another story yeah. afterwards. So well done, everybody, Tim. Thanks to everybody's hard work, I think we're, we're on track. This is Ignatius Sancho. He was alive at the same time that Fanny Fust was alive. We are in the assembly rooms. The important people are at this end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The music starts. You two at the top are going to hold hands and come between the others and then go back to your place. Well done. Unless you hold Clem's hand, 
and you direct her to go around you, either over your head or in front. So you're doing a turn as well, yes? So which way do you want to make Clem go around you? That way. Okay. And you two, the Fashion Museum. My name's Fleur and I'm part of the Fashion Museum team here at Bath and we use this room to give access to objects in the collection that aren't on display downstairs in the gallery. We've so have got three dresses. Um, very lucky because actually I managed to find a wedding dress that was worn exactly in 1787. I thought I'd really nicely read your story. That looks rather constricted. Can we able to have a yes? Please handle them. So these are called stays. Um, we would probably call them corsets nowadays, but they were called stays at the time. Um, and you can feel just how how um, structured they are, and they really change the shape ouch. of the body. Is all I'm going to say. Yeah. I ouch. wouldn't want to eat very much yeah. with a corset. To to try and run or jump or dance. From the moment they got older, they would treat as an adult and not a child, when in actual fact, oh, the child is yeah, a child. Yeah, I, I think it was a very different upbringing for yes. people then. And if you were wealthy, um, the focus was really yeah. on, for a woman, your upbringing um, being getting you ready for marriage, mm. really. By hand? You would make that. Mm. You would make all of this by by everything mm. by mm. by hand. Fine cotton um, petticoat. Then you would have this. Then you would. Have and then you would have the dress. Hmm. No wonder they couldn't move. Over. And then any outerwear that you yes. wanted. If it was winter, you might have a cloak or a coat. Or oh my God! I would have had to get up at six o'clock <laughs> or five. <laughs> To get dressed and yes. to come into a yes. storyteller's looking like that. Do you like yes. to wear those yeah. things? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is silk. You can tell it's silk. That's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm. Whoever made this stitch this by hand, they would have had to do it by candlelight. Well, funny, if you didn't know the um, roads are going to be. The toilets. Yeah, that is a good question. I mean, yeah. how would they have come to the loo with 20 layers of yeah. fabric around? <laughs> Hats. Oh, hat time. You don't get hat hair like you do now when you put the cap on your head and oh. hair's on your head. They didn't get the sauce. <laughs> well, they look yes. like yes. someone yes. wore them That's quite a lot. Yes. They've yeah. got a bit of frayed yeah. around the ankle. Okay. So, so obviously this person must have been very wealthy and used a lot of to use at them. about to be an abduction of an oh, 18th yeah. century era. Is there a postman somewhere? Mr. Postman. postman, please take this invitation to the house of Miss Fanny Fast and deliver it to her hands. Certainly. She sent her agents to follow to France to make sure that the kidnap would not be Agents, romance. agents, come quickly. My daughter has been abducted by this man here. Good God! Do you know where they went? Went that way. Yes, went that way. That way? Have you seen this lady? Have you seen I 
thought you did absolutely brilliantly and it was really putting people out of their comfort zone and actually that's what I think the event is all about and it really worked so well done you. I love my jobs but out of everything in the week the best place I can ever think of probably getting to is if it's three talents because I love my before men. Misfits, we love fun, I'm sure you guys do too. We do. So let me tell you a bit about the Misfits. As you can tell, we're a bunch of Misfits. So what do we do? Good acting, really. Acting, teaching, trying to jump around, exploring. What we'd like to do is to show you two very short extracts from the performance that we're developing. My fine police officers, I want you to guard this house. You stand here, thank you, you stand here, thank you. They stay in there, and I go away. Indeed, Monsieur. <laughs> no, 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 no. you stay here, you stay here. No, no. You stay here. I go, you stay, they stay in there, you do not let them out. Don't let them out, let them in. Or was it, don't let them in, let them out, Monsieur? No, no, you keep... The bit with the, um, the guards we were a bit worried about because it's kind of like making fun of people with a learning disability. I can see that, yes. wondered if you'd ever faced that same problem and how you dealt with Sometimes it. Sometimes we do it in our poems. Did it feel uncomfortable to you watching? It made me laugh, I thought it was quite funny. Yeah, I really liked it. And the staging of it and, <coughs> and the idea behind it, but yeah. It's just looking where the power lies in there. I think maybe it's because you had the language and you were the lead on it. If Robin was actually taking control of it, so he had the power, then you wouldn't have a problem. Then it would be uh, that's really helpful. just yeah. Back actually, you can't let anybody out. Depart or oh. otherwise exit. But I'm asking to come in where? to see the master of the house. I don't know about that, Monsieur. Yes, so, it's so right. I want you to come in. Anyway, it says you're supposed to keep people in, not let them in. You mean we keep people in, don't we? Yes. Your, your job is you're supposed to keep people in the house, you're yes. supposed to stay in the house. He wants to come in. I wonder if then another way we could do it is Jen brings a letter. He says if you've got to stay there, then Jamie and David move off. The Robin calls them back. There are two songs I'd like to share with you. I compose these verses. In the spring of your eyes saw a youth dressed in green and fresh ruby ribbon On his trusty horse, so boldly he did ride And there passed a fart in him Oh, and there passed a fart in him In the spring of your eyes We're so grateful to all of you for coming as our critical friends because this is, if you like, a kind of dress rehearsal where we get to show you a work in progress and to get your feedback in order to make this an even more fantastic performance um, because we're taking it to Froome Festival on the 13th of July and then uh, we're hoping to be able to take it to a lot of venues after this. And at the end of the performance, we're going to have a Q&A session with the audience. Ladies! Thank you! I'm sorry. It's a friendly game. Ooh. Henry Valman prevailed on Miss Frances Hawpain, who was acquainted with Miss Fanny Fuss, through having Look, been... there's a post chase and the other change of plan. We could go for strawberries and cream at the ostrich inn. You'll like that, won't you, Fanny? Yes, I love strawberries and cream. Oh, I know, oh. it's me! Take the main show! Oh. 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 And now it's time for you to ask us questions. Um, is it known what happened to the spurious husband at all? Are there any records? Could it happen to Dane? That happens in real life to even youngsters and people my age. When we listened to the witness statements, yeah. there were quite a few which were saying that she was totally capable of looking after herself and, Indeed. and you. So do we just suppose that those witnesses were all so from... Some of those snippets are from newspaper reports and some of them are from... 
um, kind of court records. And what happened? Did she have a long and happy life? Or did, she or did. Or did her mother what, wrap what, her in cotton wool? What happened, Richard? Her mother wouldn't allow it. Oh. Oh. That's how I found your daughter, residing at a house owned by... You're not being carried away against your inclination. Why did you go to France? From strawberries and cream. Strawberries and cream? Strawberries Boy! Boom! Take warning from...